Our reality today is as a result of what we have heard or what we are hearing. We are controlled by what we open ourselves to. And that can be information, ideas, news, counsel, suggestions, advice, reports. All these things have a way of building something inside of us that can become our today's reality. Protect your faith, protect your ministry. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible says that we should keep our heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issue of life. In New Living Translation, he said, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. God's worst translation, he said, Guard your heart more than anything else because the source of your lives flows from it. You know, we are in a time where many Christians have denied the faith, denied God and went back to the world because they felt like, well, um, we don't need it anymore. And if you trace it back, you will find out that they have opened themselves up to things that have actually affected their faith. The Bible says that we should guard our heart with all diligence. There are so many of them that I can tell you, but one of them is Paul Maxwell. He's a high-profile Christianity personality who first renounced his faith. He's well-known because he's an author or writer in Desiring God. Maxwell said on his Instagram feed, what I really miss is connection with people. What I have discovered is that I am ready to connect again. And I am kind of ready not to be angry anymore. I love you guys and I love all the friendship and support I have built here. And I think it's more important to say I am not just a Christian anymore. Hmm. Wow. Well, that's what's happening. Now, the Bible says in the last day, many will deny the faith. And now happening in our face. Another person that denied the faith is Joshua Harris. After announcing his divorce, Joshua Harris, the author of I Kissed Dating Goodbye and former pastor of a mega church in Maryland, renounced his faith by saying, I have undergo a massive shift in regards to my faith in Jesus. Now, remember, this guy is a mega church pastor. All right? I have undergone a massive shift in in regards to my faith in Jesus. Uh, What he was trying to say is that I'm falling away. By all the measure I have for defining a Christian, I am not a Christian. So he's telling us that by all the measure that he can say that this is a Christian, he can't find it himself anymore. He's no more a Christian. Now, I want to share with you how you should guard your heart. Because if you open yourself to what is going on around us, it will affect your faith. And that is what the devil wants. Number one is guard what you hear. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 31. The Bible says that the hears that hear the book of life, we abide among the wise. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. The good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart. And the evil man bring evil things out of the evil treasure of his heart. For out of the overflows of the heart, the mouth speak. What you hear influences your thought and your action. So you must filter what you listen to. Listening to positive message affect you. Listening to good music affect you. Listening to good news affect you. Protect what you hear. Number two is protect what you see. You know, the Bible says that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 to 23, this is Jesus speaking here. The eyes is the lamp of the body. So if your eyes is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. 
If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Jesus speaking here. Matthew chapter 5 verse 28. But I say to you that everyone who look at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Eyes are the lamp of the body. They influence our spiritual and moral health. So avoiding negative influence. Keep your eyes on the things that align with God's words for your life. Number three, designing what you perceive. Genesis chapter 27, verse 27. So he came near and kissed him, and Isaac smelled the smell of his garment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. The smell of my son is as a smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. So he can smell the blessing of the God. If you can smell the blessing, then it is possible for somebody to smell trouble also. And that can affect you. All right? So smell and perception affect our environment and mindset. So surround yourself with environments that nurture spiritual growth and positivity. And that can be our church community. Other believers around us, surround yourself with those kind of people. No? Okay, so I've shared with you three things you need to guard to protect yourself and protect your ministry. And that is what you hear, what you see, and what you perceive, what you smell. Now, I want to tell you this. If you are being affected by the news or by things around you and it's affecting your faith, I have good news for you. These are the things you need to do. Number one, the Bible says that you should renew your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, I like it in the Amplified Version because it kind of like break it down for us. Amplified Version says, and do not be conformed to this word any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you must draw spiritually by the renew of your mind. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitude so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in its plan and purpose for you. Transformation comes from renewing your mind with God's truth. We can only experience transformation when we renewed our mind with God's truth. So how do you do that? You meditate on scriptures. Meditate, ponder it, think about it, say it, confess it, reject worldly mindset, embrace God's perspective for your life. And the next one is living by faith and not by fear. You know, Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says, For daring." is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me, living by faith. Fear contaminates faith. Faith in God overcomes all impossibilities. So what do you do? You replace fear with faith-filled declarations. Replace fear with faith-filled declaration, trusting in God's promises despite circumstances. So, as Christians, we must guard what enters into our heart through what we hear, see, or perceive. Living by faith empowers us to overcome fear and fulfill God's calling and purpose for our life. So today, I pray that may God give you strength to maintain spiritual discipline and discernment in guarding your heart and your ministry. 
God called you for a purpose and he has given you a unique ministry. It is your duty to guard it because many are connected to your ministry. You are called to reach certain people and allowing the challenges of this world, the distraction of this world, the noise of this world, and wrong information, and wrong advice, and wrong news, and terrible things that is going on around us, allowing it to fill your heart will destroy what God has called you to do. If you enjoyed this our video, please subscribe to our channel. My name is Aditayo Adebowale. I will see you in the next episode. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.